It's so good to have you here. This is going to be an update. I'm going to make it as quick as possible. We have a total of 15 orchids on the top shelf here in my blooming alley, which need to have their once over, be it flushing, pest maintenance, prevention, all that fun stuff. And let's see if we can discover something. And number 16, I do not move because whoa, until everybody's off the shelf, we will look at number 16 right at the end. Thank you for joining me. Let's have a look at some Oncidiums, some Cattleyas, a Dendrobium, Zygopedalums, and I'm going to try and be snappy about it. My first orchid is my wildcat, golden red star. I'm seeing something white over here. I think that's just natural fertilizer from the birdies. Doesn't seem to be shifting just with alcohol, so we'll leave that. But I'm seeing also some pseudobulbs back here that have served their purpose. So this one here is very, very soft. This one is still firm. Let's see if I can get rid of this one just to do some maintenance. I could wait, don't want to. While we're at it, let's get rid of it. Looks good to me. That wet could be concerning. Let me give it a sniff. Yeah, just smells of decayed pseudobulb. Doesn't smell pungent or in any way, shape or form. Alarming, just normal decay smell, that's fine. We're gonna leave that like that to air out, all good. Do I need to flush? I think I'm going to flush this one. I only just put fertilizer in the pot. So I'm just gonna give this one a flush, seeing as it's a very breezy day today. So the dry wind is back, no harm, no foul. And just giving this pot some oxygen and then it can go back into its nice fertilized water. There we go. One down, 15 to go. Here's my Peggy Ruth Carpenter. You can see I added some moss right at the base here because she's a climber, roots coming out aerial. I don't want them to fail. These are looking okay. They're hydrating, so I'm not gonna be needing moss there. That's looking fine. Yeah, she can do with a flush. Peggy always needs a flush. Once Peggy gets growing, it's like, oh, she is thirsty. What we're also going to do is check for pests because she is a mealybug magnet. And my checking for pests in this instance is just a little bit of a misting with garlic alcohol. The link of that video with the recipe, storage, etc., etc., is going to be in the description. And that's all she needs right now because she had her little maintenance done two weeks ago, I believe, because being an active growth, I always have to keep an eye out for Peggy. She can do with a new batch of fertilizer. That looks a little bit old to me. So here we have a little bit of seaweed and 300 parts per million of a balanced orchid fertilizer. Peggy is good to go. Next up is my Bretonia Shelob Tolkien, which she is not, so let me confirm the name. She was re-identified as Bretonia Shelob crossed with Rinconia Marie L. She came, as you can see, from Portugal, from Fernanda Nascimento Orchids and Succulents. She has not had any issues since she's arrived in my collection. She even bloomed for me. Now this one is exceptional in the fact that it is in pumice because I had pumice left over from a stash from a long time ago. And I felt like, look, you're just sitting here collecting dust, <laughs> pun intended. And well, she's doing well in the pumice. I'm very pleased about that. And look at this. She's been growing two new growths. It's just fantastic. Roots are going in the pot. And the first growth is giving us a spike. I am kind of hoping that the second growth will as well, but I can't see anything. So I'm going to give her a flush, seeing as it is that time of year for her as well. Always a good thing with Oncidiums during the summer. Inactive growth. They are thirsty. We'll give her a good pour through. And you can see that I did add the fertilizer recently, so she can just go back into her pot. Blooms, if I don't make a mistake from 
this one will be coming shortly. Woohoo! Here's a beautiful Oncidium, and I say beautiful because she is growing vigorously. I got her from Insta Orchids and ADD back in 20. One, I don't have a tag for her yet because she hasn't bloomed. I would like her to bloom before I start making a tag. It could be a Miltonidium, not entirely sure, being that she is an Oncidium. I only just flushed her a week ago because of the three growths. Once again, she's not exactly a climber, but you can see in here how the roots, you know, they're trying to get into the media. I would like to encourage that. So she is on my flush rotor weekly, but you can also see the fertilizer levels are high enough, so I'm not going to add that. It would be wonderful to see one of these three growths produce a spike. They are transition growths, but they have done superbly. And she stayed outside throughout my entire winter. Look at that. Love this orchid. Look at how orange the base is. And no, that's not rot. It's just something that she does. It's pretty amazing. Just double checking but it is all nice and firm. So three new growths, brand new root system on the way. Again, I don't see any issues with her. Super duper happy with this. I hope, Yinsa, if you see this video, that you're pleased with her as well. Next up is my Boyster Carrara, Melissa Brianne. I thought she was a dark, but she's not. Now she was a rescue orchid that I got a long time ago. And I also promptly put her back into rescue mode because she was growing so well, I dropped the ball. This little deteriorated pseudobulb in the back, not concerned. Now that thing is as old for as long as she's been in my collection. So I was hoping I could just pull her. While I cut one pseudobulb off the other orchid, I've already sterilized my snips again. So I do that with every cut. So this is just a spent old pseudobulb. There is nothing here to see, no rot or anything. Now, it doesn't mean the orchid isn't doing superbly she could do much much better and she is under attack from probably scale little crawlers that i can see at the base but you can also see two new growths coming so we'll just deal with the crawlers and hopefully she will be left alone she lives outside during my winters as well while her flowers are beautiful yeah you can tell in my voice i'm not that invested in this orchid but hey we're gonna take care of her seeing as she's growing she did try and bloom for me this year, but her flower spikes were so pathetic, they even didn't make it really above the pseudobulb height. So they, she bloomed down here in a weird bundle. Very, very strange. The first time she's done it like that for me. So maybe there are underlying issues creeping in now, and maybe I shouldn't have her outside during the winters, but it wasn't the first winter that I did that. She's always been outside during my winters, so that's a bit odd that things are looking weird. We'll just monitor the two new growths and see what she does. And also just keep an eye that no pests decide to attack her. Next up is another orchid from Portugal from Fernanda Nascimento Orchids and Succulents. This is my Guarachea Black Comet. Grew three new growths since she arrived in my collection. Just giving her leaves a little bit of a dust down just because it is a little bit excessive. I normally don't go dusting all my leaves all the time, but when I do have them off the shelf, if the dust is excessive as it is in this case, yeah, we're going to give them a wipe. So three new growths. I don't think she's going to bloom for me, but she is busy with three more new growths. So that's one here, one there, and one there. And if she's going to be really bold, that eye could also be on the move. I'm not going to be greedy. She's doing well. That's all I can ask for. And when I've finished wiping, I will flush her through, seeing as this one is also a very thirsty orchid when she is in active growth. She's got plenty of fertilizer since I did that last week. She's good to go. Hope you're happy with her progress, Fernanda. Zygonesia Murasaki Komachi. <laughs> Very spiddly little growths here. She's growing two new growths. I'm happy that she's at least growing two new growths. We've got roots coming out at the bottom that I have to be mindful of where I place the pot because I do want to flush her being a zygo. Keep it wet, wet, wet. 
At least she's progressing with a second new growth this year. She hasn't bloomed for me in the longest time. As long as she's growing, we're gonna get new roots, bring her back to strength. She also lives outside in the blooming alley all year round. Was fertilized last week, that's fine by me. So there we go, Murasaki Komachi. Nothing really else to do here. Zygopetalum trozy blue, got some dirty leaves. We'll just take that and take care of that. Now, she did bloom for us, hey, hey, and she was gorgeous. She had a fantastic blooming in comparison to what she had last year. So I feel like she's going to be okay as long as she just doesn't climb out of the pot, as you can see. <clears throat> Here we are again. That was the spike that bloomed. <sighs> yeah. Every time I repot this orchid, then it takes two years for her to get accustomed to what we had done to her. And well, it takes two years to get a nice blooming out of her. Anyway, we are going to honor her efforts with a good flush. You can see that also last week I put fertilizer in there, so I just need to top that up a little bit. Or not, because as the water flushes through, I do then put it back with a timely measure of what is going to go into the pot and raise the water level. So thank you for blooming. Now keep growing. New root system, awesome. Zygopedalum Louisendorf, look at this. If you remember, or if you haven't seen the video where I potted her up and it was a rotting pseudobulb, this is the status quo right here. That video I shall link in the description. You can see I've got roots growing into what was another bit of rot that I eliminated out of that bulb right there. So there's a whole video on how to repot with rot. But, ta-da! This will be her first blooming in my care if I don't make a mistake. This little paper towel is always there because there's a lot of cinnamon right there and until that bulb isn't cut off, it's staying there to catch any of the cinnamon that would blow away from the wind and then probably desiccate my roots. So that's not happening. So I'm gonna wet that tissue again and then give her a very good flush. She is growing super well. She's just a little machine. So I've got a growth right here. This is a teeny tiny little growth of recovery. And then of course the growth that has the spike, which is extremely tender, so I'm super careful. But uh, she's already on the move with the next growth. So super pleased with this little one. I just bought her on a whim from the garden center because I love the blooms. These are some zygopetalum blooms that I would consider my favorites. And we normally don't see Luisendorfs in the garden centers at such a reasonable price. Came with her downsides with the rot, but look at that. <laughs> There's nothing stopping us from making this orchid happy. Here's my Dendrobia Memoria Krista Erdman, also bloomed beautifully for us earlier in the season. I just dusted the leaves. I've got a little spider living in that pot. So I'm not gonna do them again. When I say just dusted, that was probably a week ago, so I'm not gonna do that again. But you see the pot is empty. It was pretty nasty. I washed it out. So clearly this one is going to need a flush. Not actively growing at the moment, but I do believe that this one likes to grow roots on a sporadic basis, so we will honor that. Just by putting some oxygen into this tank, <laughs> AKA pot. And then a very light dose of fertilizer. Not that she needs it, not that she's in active growth, and that's why I'm doing it, but because I've just run out of my plain RO water from all the flushing, which I now shall replenish. But Memoria Krista Erdman, yeah, should be coming into active growth anytime soon. The first Catlia update here is my pastoral innocence. The only experience I've had with this one so far is that I have had a lot of bud blast with her. So what I'm doing this season is trying to pump her full of calcium nitrate, calcium magnesium, and all that fun stuff that she might be able to hold out through the winter months and eventually bloom for us. So I'm just wiping the leaves because you can clearly see <clears throat> much needed in this case. 
a very beautiful new growth. Absolutely loving the size of this one. So it'll be the same as the previous one. The previous one not wanting to bloom for us. The one or the second and third one before that wanted to bloom for us, but these buds blasted. So it's not like she's not growing. It's just the timing, in my opinion, why she can't bloom in my collection. We shall see. As long as she's growing, growing new roots, it's all wonderful. She's not in any way, shape or form affected by not blooming. Her growths are of a wonderful size. It's just, I think the blooms come at a time of year where it's not ideal for this orchid. So there's some fertilizer in here. I shall refresh that because I have a second bucket of fertilizer that has 550, almost 600 parts per million of fertilizer and seaweed at a pH of 6.4 because she's drinking a lot. And I would like to at least encourage a healthy growth, even if I don't get blooms out of her. So we just spooked a lot of little critters in there. <laughs> they just got a shower. <laughs> Here is my Chunya Good Life number one. Beautiful growth. I am very hesitant to say that she's gonna bloom for us this year. Last year, three huge, gorgeous blooms that crowded each other out with their massive lip. But as long as she is going to grow that growth healthily, successfully, that's all I'm gonna ask of this orchid. Like I said, not going to be greedy and we're going to add the same fertilizer ratio for this one into her mask as we did for the pastoral innocence. There we go. You're done. My beautiful Coilostylus ciliaris, growing a new growth here. Probably, maybe an eye will start here. These growths matured during the winter, so due to low light levels, etc., I'm not going to get any blooms out of those growths. Otherwise, we would already be starting to see spikes, but I am going to wash her leaves and I'm going to flush her. I don't want that beautiful new root growth to go dry and desiccate on the surface of my leka. I have to be a little bit conservative with the misting around this area here because of that eye developing. Meanwhile, it's breezy and warm enough. Yeah, I should be able to get away with it, but assuming is not knowing, and I don't want to risk that with this orchid. So unfortunately, I doubt we are going to see Coilostylus ciliaris in bloom in 2023, but I do believe that we have other Coilostylus that will bloom for us. So we're going to see those beautiful, beautiful little blooms that I consider so pixie transport vehicle, very avatar-like in their bloom structure. I think it's gorgeous. Just live, just live. We hope that better times are around the corner. So there's that. And because I want to encourage her active growth, this water, this was plain water, is now going to change to full-on fertilizer like with the other two big cattleyas because we want to encourage the root growth and that eye moving. Maybe we can get that eye down there to move as well. Done. There's three pieces of Pro Catabola Golden Peacock in here because she was separated, cleaned up, etc. So we've got one piece here that is growing a new growth right there. New roots already underway. We've got one lead right here. New growth is there. New roots are happening. And the third piece is right here. New growth roots. So she needs a flush. I did all her pest maintenance last week because this one is a little bit of a yeah look at me look at me and then the scale go oh, okay i'm right here who are you i'll settle down here so there's that <laughs> she's been dealt with and i don't see any reoccurrence just now so flush was all that she needed and because i had her out and about last week there's already fertilizer in the pot which will just top up with what is draining from the flush pro catabola golden peacock doing pretty good i would say and then I have my Brassocatlia binosa Wabash Valley. Ha, huh, a little bit, little bit disappointed with this one. I mean, we've got a new growth coming here, so I'm not going to, you know, discourage this orchid from continuing growing well. She is growing well, but she can do better. I've lost the lead, the growing point on this end. She used to grow two leads every year. If she doesn't grow anything this year, that would be two years in a row 
with only one active lead. That is why I'm saying, what a bummer. That is why I say I'm disappointed. But we shall baby that one lead. Together with the golden peacock, I checked all four pests last week. So these two kind of come as a pair when I do that. I don't need to do that again from what I can see. There's nothing there that in my eyes I can see as a threat. So we're okay with that one. Now this one has had a little bit more to drink since last week. So we're just gonna switch that fertilizer out and match what we gave the Pro Catavola Golden Peacock. Just refresh the fertilizer because she's also growing actively roots. And now we come to an orchid that always gives me anxiety. <laughs> Moving this orchid around, oh my goodness. It's not easy with all her growth growing anywhere, everywhere. This is Epidendrum Parkinsoniano. And yeah, well, she's a pendant orchid, but you can see I just recently added new fertilizer, but she needs a flush because we just recently repotted her. So I'm sorry while I'm looking all over the place to not break anything. So I figured what we're going to do is flush her together, let you know what has happened since the update, because I'm not very happy about this lead right here. It's not looking good. So as with any new repot, big generous flush, always making sure that that oxygen exchange is in the pot so that the roots that were interfered with excuse me while I bend over and talk, that the roots that were interfered with know that they're still covered nicely with oxygen, fresh water, etc. So we'll let that drain for a moment because I'm going to love and leave you, but I have something to show you. <laughs> and it's a little bit cumbersome what I'm doing right now. <laughs> like I said, this orchid gives me anxiety, but I love her. So just give me a moment and I will put her back in her mask. The water level you would think is really high, but the roots in the pot are only up to here. So that water level pretty much is that high in order to accommodate the roots. And I promise you, if you're still here, you will be rewarded with something ever so gorgeous. Make sure I'm not snagging any growths. Goodness me, girl, you really, really, test me. <laughs> I'll be right back. We need to reposition <laughs> again. In order to showcase her blooms, this is what has to happen. <laughs> it's a totem pole. It's a TP. It is whatever it needs to be so that we can enjoy Epidendrum Parkinsonianum blooms where we can really see them as opposed to hello. Oh, hello. Oh, so I've got two blooms, thankfully, at least after the repot, which was quite an intervention. One lead managed to bloom out. The second lead did not. So I'm just going to be super grateful that this orchid is doing well. I may lose the small little lead, that little growth that was somewhat detached as it were. Didn't appreciate the repot being jostled around like that. I may have detached it completely. And all it is doing is just still connected by some fibrous strands. But these blooms, oh my goodness, I'm going to rejoice and celebrate them. And that is my sign of appreciation for everybody that stayed and watched to the end. Thank you so much. This is orchid number 16. I know I said at the beginning I was going to make it snappy. Well, I don't know how that's turned out, but what I am going to do is make it snappy for you at the end. Thank you so, so much for watching. I appreciate your time. Any questions that you have for any of the orchids that we have seen or anything else you want to bring to my attention, let me know in the comments. And just one more thing, would you please like the video? And if you have not subscribed, there's more orchids on the patio at the moment that I would love to introduce to you in videos to come and videos past. So like and subscribe, consider yourself welcome. Have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition though, please that you stay safe. Take care, bye.